Today we're looking at an updated way to model reinforcement from simple lines. We can create the 3D model in Rhino in just a few minutes and now we can also import the model into Revit by simply loading the script output. Okay, so it should only take a few minutes to create reinforcement for this simple structure in Rhino and also in Revit as well. And to start off, I've just got these simple lines in Rhino which are going to represent the members that I'm going to uh, create. And on the right, I've got my script in Grasshopper here. The main component is this rebar model component. That's going to take my lines in and turn them into members. I've also got some reinforcement layout options here for members, walls, slabs and footings and I've got you can save your work as well in this component here and down here I've got some loose bar so some additional bars that you might want to add so to start off I'm just going to use the main component which is uh, the modeler I'm going to add two footings just by setting multiple curves and saying apply and you can see it's added two footings in there now that's pretty simple with no reinforcement there so say I wanted to add some reinforcement all I've got to do is go down to the slab or footing rebar layout and add that to the rebar layout in component now I'll reset my work and I've still got these curves added to the component so it's already created reinforcement for me and when I'm happy I can click apply and it becomes permanent I can always reset and reapply next I'm going to add these two columns I'm going to do them as circles and the diameter I'm going to say is 400 so I'm going to use the member layout, I'm going to use member B. There's member A and member B. Member A is very simple, it just reads a description. Member B you can control it in more detail. So if I set these two columns, I'm going to give it six bars instead of four and I've still got it set to top so I'm going to make it central over the footing and I'm pretty happy with that so I'll apply that now having those columns just sitting on the footings isn't very robust so I want to put some starter bars between the columns and the footings so if I again select the columns, and this is where I can use loose bar, I'll just set these two. I want some L bars. And I need to attach the loose bar component. And you can see in the light blue, it's got a representation of what I want so I've got this set out but it looks like it's a bit off so I'm going to make it 120 in each direction so we've got those L bars coming down to anchor the columns I actually want them a bit longer so that might be a bit deep so I'm just gonna whoops the other way around 700 bring them up a little bit so they've got a decent splice length and again if I apply that it becomes permanent 
So before I go any further, I might have a look to see what that looks like in Revit. To do that, I've got this Revit output going into a data output, which just saves that as a file. So now when I switch to Revit, I've got this blank Revit file and I'm using an add-in called Rhino inside Revit. It gives you this tab Rhinoceros and you can load Grasshopper from there. And I've got a separate script loaded which just interprets that output that I've saved to a file and turns it into reinforcement <coughs> within Revit. So all I've got to do with this is bring that file input that I've loaded here and attach that to the data in. There's a few warnings, mainly to do with the way it's modeled. And you can see that we've now got all that stuff in Revit. You've got the members modeled, the column, leagues, main bars, and your loose bars here, the starter bars as well. And you can also see that that's scheduled. So you've got your shape codes, whether it's a stirrup or a standard bar and the diameters and the counts of all the bars. So it's all correctly detailed in Revit, the way Revit wants to see that reinforcement. Now I'm just gonna quickly finish this off I've got three wall segments here. I'm going to get two of them. I'm going to use the wall layout. It's going to be a rectangle. I'm going to make it a 200 thick wall. And the walls are going to be three and a half meters tall. So if I set those two curves, now I don't want them central, I want them top so that supports these beams coming over. That looks pretty good to me. I could change all the reinforcement etc as usual. But I'm just going to accept that, so apply. Now I'm just going to add another little bar, piece of wall there only one and a half meters tall. Now I'm going to add some beams. These three beams here. I'm using the member layout. Now 400 wide by 600 deep. I might make it 300 wide. and I can obviously change all the bars etc. I don't have cogs so I'm going to add cogs to both of both ends, uh, top and bottom. You can see that there so it ties into the column. You can start to see where some con congestion might happen so I'm actually going to use four bars top just to open it up a bit and you can really start to see it highlights how the bars are interacting at the corners, which is really useful. So if I add those. Now you can see here I've got this beam only half supported by this wall. And that's because I'm going to add another wall here. But if I did want to move all of this stuff, it's quite easy. You can just grab the lines and move them and the um, reinforcement will follow whatever the line does. But I'm actually just going to add a wall in here. And I'm going to go from the bottom this time. There we go. And now I'll add a slab. And 
Now it's only going to be a meter deep and only. <laughs> it's a bit of a, it's, I'm modeling as a footing so it is pretty deep. <laughs> Um, let's try six, I think it was six meters wide. No, maybe it was eight meters wide. Uh, and we've got to go from the top. Let's just say I'll make it seven. There we go. Um, I've got it all hooked. But I can also take that off. And let's say I want uh, some 20 thick bars instead. You can hardly notice actually. But I can again, I can um, switch the layers of the reinforcement and I'll just add that. So there I've got my raft foundation, some walls. Now I've just added another wall at the back there. And I'm going to bring all that into Revit. I'll bring up my script as before. And then I'll attach the new output from the file. And I'll just toggle it. And there's the rebar. So pretty easy way to get reinforcement modeled very quickly in Rhino and bring it straight into Revit. So I'll just explain the loose bars a little bit further. You can see that I've got straight here and you can see their code on the left and a description on the right on this drop down menu. And these codes are based on the British Standard Shape Codes pictured here. There are a slight modification in some instances. So you can use this picture to see what the A, B and C values need to be. And you can also see a description. So I've got L bars there, hooks, double L or U Z bars and this is using the A, B, C, D values given here which correlate to the A, B, C written in this diagram. Now you can also make these transverse so that they are aligned transverse to the member. Now they're stacked on top of one another because of the positioning that I've got. So really for transverse I just want zero and I can have a series of Z positions. So say 100 and 300. Normally I'd put these inside the beam. Um, in fact I'll make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And to put it inside the beam, in fact I'll do it, you can just make them negative. So you might want that scenario. Um, you can do it with L bars, hooks, etc. The same thing. So now if I go onto the legs, you can see it's put additional legs in there. I might make them a bit smaller diameter and again it's using the ABC etc now that looks a bit funny but the reason is 
if you look at the diagram, the C value and D value need to be quite a lot smaller. So I'm going to make them 100. That's better. And to um, 100. That looks more like a reasonable lig. And I might need it, say, 500 high and 300 wide. And get rid of this one. You can see I've got additional legs there. I'm going to make this um, 500. You get the idea here. I've added additional shear legs at the end of the beam where you might need additional shear strength. And again, I can use loops. Um, well, there's even a circle leg, although you wouldn't do that um, for a rectangular member. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.